Well, um, here we are in Castelnau d'Oy, in the southwest of France, where we have uh, the CEPIN, which is the French national test site. Um, today we came out because the um, uh, mouse has eaten one of our power cables, <laughs> put everything in a short-circuited the wind turbine, so the wind turbine was out of commission for a couple of months. But now we've got it back up and running, but of course there is no wind, which is the big problem with coming out and doing maintenance anyway. And so this is a wind turbine that we built at the Mondial de Vent in Le Cat, and that was with Hugh uh, and uh, a bunch of other people. I guess it was back in 2011. And shortly afterwards, we installed the wind turbine here to do some power curve testing at the, the national test site. And um, finally, now that the person that owns the turbine is willing to continue to loan it, we keep the machine up here and keep doing testing on it over a couple of years. Um, on the test site, we've got um, not just the Piggott design machine, we've also got a large uh, vertical axis Swiss machine that's um, installed and doing power curve testing on. They've also tested uh, several other vertical axis machines. We've got three wind measurement towers, um, two at 30 meters and one at a 20 meter height. Um, before they were testing the old system, which is a French wind turbine made in Avignon. Here, you've still got the tower that's, uh, that's hung around after the installation. Um, you also tested several other machines here over the past couple of years, and it's a constant turnover. You've got um, people that come and put up their machine for uh, usually six months to a year to do power curve testing. It also opens uh, the door to um, French government aid or regional aid. Um, if a wind turbine has been tested at the CEPIN, um, we can get a, somewhere between 25 and 30 percent government aid from the local region in the regions of Languedoc Roussillon and uh, Ronaut. So that's a, a nice incentive to test your wind turbine, like we did with the, the picket machine. And um, so we're hoping to do some more wind testing now that we've got the power cable back up and fixed. Um, we've modified the machine a little bit. We've added a little bit more weight onto the tail. Um, one thing we saw is the machine was furling a little bit early, and so we're furling a kilowatt, and we were hoping on a good time machine like this one to get more around 1.5 kilowatts, just to have a nice little curve in the end. And which is one of the ideas about testing wind turbines. Um, usually the size and the shape of the, the tail of the turbine uh, makes a big difference on when the machine starts to furl and um, so a lot of times we'll be making more or, or usually less energy than we plan for and it's something that we've seen and what we'd like to do is, is do testing on wind turbines at least for the six months once we build one and make sure that it's performing as expected and that way we can do adjustments if you want to pull out a little bit more energy in higher wind or if you want to lower the energy in high wind sometimes it's not really our goal to have a, a lot a lot of energy when in high winds because well that's the moment that we're going to wear out more of the blades we're going to wear out more of the, the the generator itself sometimes maybe it's better just say hey we've got an off-grid site now we've got a lot of high winds well we'll just slow it down and and uh we've got the batteries that are pretty much full at that moment anyway so. What kind of equipment are you using to log data here? Um, the data logging, uh, well that's handled by, we've got one of the people from the site here, Charles uh, Tournon, who's here, he's explaining to some of the group about the, um, the installation and the site. Um, the wind measurement system here, you have to ask to Charles. <laughs> so we can ask Charles about what, what they're using to log. Um, when I was in the US at the test site, we were using mostly uh, Campbell, Campbell Scientific loggers. Um, here, uh, I think they have an interface and they're logging it directly onto a computer and that's then being sent off to um, a server so that way the, the data gets, doesn't get lost um, if somebody steals the laptop that's here. And this test site is, is fully um, kind of compliant with the IEC norms for power performance testing. Yeah, this, uh, the first site was in Narbonne which didn't correspond to the IEC norms. Um, it's much too turbulent and so the decision to make a site here here it's pretty good, especially from the wind coming from the, the west. We've got a, um, a good results from the west. The problem is from the east, um, there's this building here and the building behind it and uh, the row of trees that give turbulence that usually that, that data needs to be discarded. So usually the measurements is only being done with the wind coming from the, the west. But is that the predominant wind direction? Yeah, that's uh, probably 60 or 70 percent of the wind is coming from the west and so the rest they're not really worried about it. If we lose that much, and how long would it? How long would it normally take to fill up a power curve all the way up to what is it, 25 meters per second on uh, the IEC standard? Here we should be able to do that in between six months and a year. Oh, that's quite a long time. So, what, what is the mean annual mean wind speed here? Uh, you have to ask Charles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say myself. Okay. Thanks, okay. Jay. No worries.